Since 1874, the human race has produced over 333,000 feature films, although now that amount of footage is uploaded to YouTube every single day. Now, I can't help you with YouTube, but I can save you some time with all that celluloid by summarising the movies people say you need to have seen quicker than a year-old laptop will take to boot up. Welcome to No Need to Watch. American Beauty was not the sequel to American Graffiti, but it did at least cotton on to the trick that things instantly sound a little bit more fascinating if you put American in front of them, like American Psycho or American Nails, which is the name of a salon in Catford and sounds much, much better than Catford Nails. To cut quite a long, quite a boring story short, Kevin Spacey plays small town American Lester, whose suburban idyll is obviously not all it seems. His wife hates him enough to have a boring affair, while his daughter gets a template rebellion boyfriend and his neighbours bicker amongst themselves. So far, so soap opera. Lester himself resorts to a full-on NHS checklist style midlife crisis. New car. Ding. Jailbait crush. Ding. Mug job. Ding. The object of his affections is his daughter's best friend Angela, played by the love interest from the video to and though he manages to keep it in his pants around her, we, the audience, are subjected to some not-so-subtle fantasy sequences about her, which I'll come on to later. Lester discovers his wife's affair, but magnanimously lets it lie. Possibly because he's got the horn for a teenage girl. Meanwhile, his daughter, plain Jane Superbrain, is falling for Lester's colonel neighbor's son, Ricky, because in a moment worthy of Frasier in its high farce, the colonel thinks Ricky is actually banging Lester. <laughs> And a film that appears to be about the true nature of the pointlessness of the pursuit of happiness actually turns out to hinge on the repression of homosexuality in the US military. See, the film ends in a pretty goddamn satisfying way, with Kevin Spacey having that smug, secret smile wiped off his face by a big gun when he rejects the advances of the confused, repressed colonel. There's briefly a moment where you're not supposed to be sure who shot him because it's America and all the main characters have been shown holding guns at some point or another. But trust me, the military nut did it. Dead Spacey then narrates us into the credits and we all get to go home and nod sagely to ourselves. The film nowadays looks just like an old HBO series, which is not surprising because it was written by Alan Ball, who went and did Six Feet Under a couple of years later. Because with any family, hey, scratch beneath the surface and you reveal um, a slightly cleaner surface. Now, the important thing to really know about this film is that there's some director significant stuff about red roses because Kevin Spacey's wife grows and cuts them and Kevin Spacey's daughter's friend lies on beds covered in them in his head, which is of course completely acceptable, although maybe we've moved on a bit since 1999 and that sort of thing is not cool anymore. Plus, Pink copied it in a pop video and so did everyone else, except not on the internet so much because YouTube didn't even exist in 1999 and maybe that's why people had midlife crises back then. But sometimes, guys, what you do with a rose has very little significance at all. I'm a good boy! Ah, I'm a the key scene that everyone brings up is where Thora Birch's rebellious boyfriend, Ricky, films a plastic bag blowing about in the wind and then shows her the video in an attempt to get her into bed. Because of Sam Mendes's rather flat dramaturgy, it's never clear whether this is really supposed to be incredibly moving, slash somehow erotic, slash brilliantly symbolic, or just a parody of the terrible sort of thing student filmmakers do in an attempt to get women into bed. But all you need to know is it's a video of a plastic bag blowing around in the wind, and you don't need a $15 million movie to show you what that looks like, especially if you look out the window next time you visit American Nails. At the very least, American Beauty did propel the talented Thora into international stardom, possibly, cynically, because she took her top off. Mind you, American Beauty won five Academy Awards, and it's 122 minutes long, so that's an Oscar every 24 minutes and 24 seconds, which is pretty good darn value for a film which is basically a posh version of Days of Our Lives. The biggest career lift from the film was for the marimba, which featured extensively in the soundtrack going Bloom, bloom, bloom 
Blim, 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 which went on to be in every single episode of a home makeover TV show or show about people who clear drains, which is a wonderful legacy for any movie. What not to say about the film? Gosh, aren't men just the most complex, creative and sensitive creatures on the planet? And aren't women neurotic and annoying? What you should say about the film? Gosh, Sam Mendes really knows how to coax a good performance out of a carrier bag, doesn't he? So there you go. American Beauty. No need to watch. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Uh, and for more like this, click on the links. And if there's a movie that you can't be bothered to watch, let me know in the comments because, you know, it's rude to talk over the bell. Shh. You shush. No one's going to download this now.